three. Okay, welcome back to another astounding episode of the Scoreboard Addicts podcast. I'm Nick, and with me as always is TJ, who's hammered, and our local lawyer, Anthony the Rook. How's it going, fellas? It's going pretty well. Not yeah. bad, not bad. How, how about you, Nick? Uh, living the dream. Uh, first things first, today is Veterans Day. Thank you to all that serve. Thank you. Uh, continue to serve, have served, and uh, thank you to, for all that you do and bring to the table for our country so that we can live in freedom and happiness and uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor. And Cheers. you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Uh, Thanks to you, Nick. You're a local veteran. Yeah, uh, I guess I am. We local celebrity, appreciate, too. Appreciate your service for our country and everything that you do and continue to do for our country. So thank you. Tell that to my commanding officer. Um, <laughs> no, my commanding officer is a great guy, actually. We get along famously. I hope he's not listening to this. Even if he was, he knows that we get along famously. So that's cool. My, my, my commander's a good dude. Shout out to him. Um, so I wanted to jump into this. I know you guys like that. I, I recently have been Facebook of local politics. So I have a new one. It's not local politics, but it's local pages. And this is why my friend sent me this was the Manalpin town page, which is like usually it just says like Manalpin community town page. And people post like, Questions about what to do in Manalapin, restaurant you know, suggestions and local stores. They post vendors, stuff like that. You know, just normal community, <laughs> everyday stuff. And so apparently someone hacked the page. And instead of making the Manalapin town page, they made it the Big Black Cock fan page. And you would think it'd be something just so simple. Just go into it and be like, oh, why don't they just change it back to the Manalapin town page? But unfortunately, when you change a group name faith due to Facebook policy, you have to wait 30 days. So now the town is just posting typical town stuff, but on a page that's called the Big Black Cock fan page. I, I think the most surprising thing is that the Big Black Cock fan page wasn't already taken. I, I would think that'd be very popular. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually very true. That, I'm that's, surprised it wasn't taken. But That's a good point. And it was they're really, going to get a lot of really weird people joining that fan page. Yeah, uh, soon enough they're going to be like, "These people are not from Manalapan. These people just like big black guys." <laughs> it's like that episode of Friends when Ross gets the uh, the pager and his number is uh five 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 Jumbo. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's getting uh, phone calls from everybody else. He's like, "Yeah, based on that phone number, I think you'd be really disappointed with me." Yeah, <laughs> Brooke, I meant to ask you. The elections passed. Did the uh, the guy that couldn't add up? Pies Pizza? and slices from the pizza joint. Did he ever get a job? Um, he lost like 60 something to 30 something. Like he was, it was a landslide. And I like to think that it was all because of my pizza math that undid him. It was just like, it, he didn't have anything to say. He actually quoted back to me and he was like, I approve this message. And I'm like, so you think <laughs> that you were wrong? Like you, you proved that the fact that I said your pizza math is wrong. It, so his pizza math it, wasn't wrong. It was irresponsible. Well, I know who's going to be on the ticket in four years, and that's going to be our man, Rook. I mean, politician is just a promotion for a lawyer, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to run on the platform of I will not waste your pizza money and just keep playing that same picture of my Facebook. But also the funny thing with the the Malapin Town page is recently someone posted about how you could have your kids come and ride ride braid deers (laughs) for Christmas. And it's like, this should not be on the big black cock fan page. <laughs> oh my god! Like, and the guy posted the pictures of like ponies dressed like reindeer, and I was like, "Oh, come on!" This is couldn't not- even get real reindeer. That's just lazy. No, nah, they couldn't get real reindeer. They're just pony rides, and they're they have fake antlers and stuff. But- Posers. Uh, Facebook. Zoers. You gotta love. You gotta love Facebook and. Old people on Facebook. It's called Meta now. Well, listen, this is what happens when your password is Manalapin123. <laughs> like, come on. You, you know somebody who's just sitting there bored one day like, oh, I'm totally going to fuck these guys. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's definitely a guy that used to run the page and got fired. I, <laughs> so what I, found? I mean, that's that's got to mean all time low, getting fired from running the Manalapin <laughs> Facebook page. Hey, listen. Well, the, election, the election just ended, so it was like the ex-mayor. Yeah. Like, maybe the mayor There's lost. no way. If that's the mayor's responsibility, that's the sad. <laughs> it's Man- it's Manalapan Township. He's probably the mayor, the sheriff, the deputy, the, the guy, the bailiff, the judge, everything. You're making yeah. it seem like Manalapan is like a real city. 
and the mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's also the mechanic. And he's the and he's the pizza guy. Which like, yeah, goes to show you that in those local elections, you better know how to count pizza. Yeah, you better. It's like Shits Creek. You guys ever watched Shits Creek? The mayor's like he's just he does everything. Um, so it's similar to that because it's just a small town, basically, in New Jersey. But that's my Facebook uh experience for this week. So hopefully next week I have more. Uh, called Meta now. Sorry, like, Meta. like Meta World Peace. Did you see, I tweeted that uh, Meta and Facebook. No, run our test and Facebook shaking hands, and it says change your name to Meta. I liked him better when he was like Panda World Lover or something like that. What did he change his name to? I liked it better when he was taking fans out in the stands. Run our test. So moving forward, what do we got up next in the real world of sports? Uh, so I figured. Um, not too much hockey NBA. It's just regular season, boring, ho-hum stuff. So I figured we go heavy with NFL this week. Um, so we had a big week nine that we just passed. So just get some reactions. The Jaguars won a football game in the United States for the first time since week one of last year. Um, and they beat the Bills nine to six. I picked the Bills to win that one big. And I guess that might have been my fault. So I apologize to Brian. I tweeted out. Um Final score. It's the Jags. I think the Jags Twitter. Can I put final score 41 to 14? And it ended up being it was nine to six Jags. So my apologies, Brian. I might have jinxed the uh don't apologize to Brian. The Braves just won the World Series. You got no apologies to make to Brian. Listen, we owe Brian a great deal of thanks for the Braves winning the World Series. Okay. If it wasn't for awesome fans that stuck by their team like that, we'd have to deal with cheaters winning again. I don't disagree, but I'm saying I don't have to apologize to him for his football team losing. His baseball team just won the World Series. That's true. That's true. I don't know. He's feeling good. He's riding high. I don't know. Losing like that, he, he deserves an apology. Hey. Somebody should get thrown through a flaming table outside a tailgate. Well, I won't do that, but I will apologize. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. I mean, other, other week nine reactions. And I think last week we, we were watching the Jets game live, so we talk about that game. Uh, the Giants won a game, um, surprisingly, over the Raiders. Xavier McKinney came up huge with two big picks. One of them he returned for a touchdown. So the Giants defense, you know, starting to cook a little bit here, uh, getting a little better, but their offense is still brutal because their quarterback stinks. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if you guys watched that game too, but I don't think Daniel Jones still is not the guy, you know, that won these games. It's not because of him. It's a uh, – so – I, I think I went over this last week. When the Jets lose, I have zero inclination to watch football, really. It kills my will to live, honestly. When the Jets lose badly, I just kind of sit there, and I'm just like, I don't want to watch any type of football because of the chance that I might see something competent and sit there and just go, why can't my fucking team do that? But uh, I, I caught the highlights, or lowlights, rather. Um, yeah, Daniel Jones is not the guy. Anybody that thinks he is the guy needs to stop living in, in dreamland. Uh, he played football at Duke University. It's not because he's a great football player. Now, if he would have played basketball at Duke, I'd have said, you know what? That guy might go to the Hall of Fame. But he didn't. Played football there. That's not saying much. Actually, the whole ACC isn't that good at all for, since, since Florida State was winning national championships. So, uh, or I can take it back, Clemson too. You know, Florida State and Clemson went back and forth for a little bit. Since Trevor Lawrence left the ACC, it's not even worth talking about the ACC right now. And I'm a Florida State fan. So, yeah, Daniel Jones sucked. I watched him play in college against Florida State. He was trash then. He's trash now. I mean, the 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 Mannings swindled the uh, the Giants, just like they they swindled the Jets, and the Mannings collectively helped ruin football in New York for about eight years, right? Because I mean, they convinced the Giants to draft Daniel Jones, and it's going to take a minute to recover from that. And they convinced the Jets to hire Adam Gase. It's going to take a minute to recover from that. So you know, well, I don't know that they actually convinced them to take Daniel Jones. I don't know. Absolutely, one hundred and fifty percent. Where's your proof? He went to the training camp with uh, Archie and, and Peyton. Oh, I see your thing. And then Archie called up the Giants and actually gave a, a word of recommendation. But no, other other big games that were like huge upsets we have is the uh, um, what was the oh the Broncos beat the Cowboys and like destroyed them. the the Bron- the Broncos laying the beach to the Cowboys. I'm watching that game and I'm just watching the Cowboys sit on a donut. It was brutal. And and what's Brutal. crazy is they won the week before with the backup. They finally right. they finally the rush. Out. 
Yeah, they they finally get uh, their starter back in, and it doesn't amount to much. No, nah, Dak Dak played, and they lost. And I took them at halftime, my uh, plus ten, and I was like, oh, they'll definitely cover plus ten and a, and a half. They're only down hmm. sixteen. They were like down like twenty four nothing. Next thing you know, so like, is there a quarterback contra- controversy in Dallas? I don't think so. Uh, why not? There's one in New York. Every quarterback in New York apparently is is clamoring to start. So I mean, yeah, but you know what? Resting Zach Wilson for a season and letting him learn is not a bad move either way. Oh, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah, so many great quarterbacks sat the bench. It, it's it's every reason we burn out. Jets have a track record of throwing people. The we the Jets have a track record of throwing people right into the flames and expecting them to come out and bring us to the playoffs. It's not the Jets. It's the entire NFL. Because rookie contracts are so expensive and short uh, and and a lot of guaranteed money, it just doesn't make sense to find out that the guy's a bust five years into a contract. Because those first three years are are guaranteed. The fourth is not really, and the fifth definitely is not. Um, It's just one of those things where you're sitting there and and you got to say, like, all right, are you are we going to have this guy and find out in year five that he's not the guy when we could have drafted the the new the new hotness in in year four, you know? Um, so they don't let guys sit the bench because if they sit the bench, that's just time that they can't evaluate him. I mean, Brett Favre sat the bench, uh, Steve Young sat the bench, Eli Manning sat the bench. Not that he's a good quarterback, but he did sit the bench. Uh, he's not a good quarterback. You can sit there and laugh about it all you want, Rook. He, yeah, he, he was on a team that won two Super Bowls. He's the, probably one of the worst quarterbacks. He's probably like top 10 worst quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl. Who's and, worse? And, and, and worst quarterback to win two Super Bowls. 100%. That, that 100%. Worst <laughs> quarterback okay, to win two Super Bowls. I don't want to switch, to, I don't want to switch topics. Um, another big, another uh, Crazy win was the Titans over the Rams. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, not for nothing. I mean, the Titans are such a hot and cold team. You don't know which yeah. team you're getting. They'll come out and just look abysmal and not be able to move the ball and not be able to stop anybody. And then a week later, they're driving down the field and, and just nonstop run game. I mean, not, not anymore. anymore, but not anymore. But they still won against the Rams. The Rams is a yeah. good defense. Um, and then the Cardinals game, I know me and Nick were talking about it last week with the picks was the, I said, I took the Cardinals, they were road, I think, yeah, they were road dogs, they were plus two and a half, you're like, it's gonna be no Murray, DeAndre Hopkins wasn't in that game, AJ Green wasn't in that game, and uh, who, Colt McCoy, Colt McCoy filling into K1, and coming through, they won 31 to 17, I mean, that defense is still very good, they're still a very good team, we went out him, but, uh, I mean, hopefully he's back this week for them, for their sake, but, uh, yeah, that was another surprising one there too. But all the all their missing pieces, and they still came out with the win there. And, and the Browns, forty-one to sixteen, or the Bengals. That was a big surprise for me too, because I thought the Bengals would, you know, they're kind of falling off since beating the, since destroying the Rams, like four. I mean, the Ravens, like forty-one to like fourteen, or whatever it was. They kind of fallen back to earth too. So I was actually going to use that exact phrase. I was going to say they fell back to earth. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, was, it was a weird week. I, I think the weirdest thing we saw last week was uh, I saw, a, 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 I think they call it a dragon takedown uh, in wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. When you grab a guy by his heel, yes. you wrap your leg around his leg and flip him over on it. Yeah, good old Mac Jones Scum from, the, uh, from the, the New England Patriots, which has always shown themselves to be such a high-class organization with their uh, – Owner that goes to rubbing tugs and uh, you know cheating at multiple seasons and multiple Super Bowls and you know and now we have they have their quarterback that heel hooks a defensive a defender and uh, every Patriots fan in the world is defending it like that's just a regular tackle you don't tackle people who don't have the ball he was just he just fell over himself he twisted himself down you literally see him you can see cobra kai sensei in the background like sweep the leg and mac jones is like yeah sure let's sweep this leg real quick you know yeah, I mean, he had the, the angle lock he did he he grabbed his ankle and then swept like, the other leg <laughs> under yeah and and people are like and then he goes i thought he had the ball the ball was like 8 yards away yeah i mean and then somebody goes well that's just a block you can hold people no you can't holding is against it's a flag unless you play for the patriots and then it's nothing, apparently. 
Yeah. Also, too, like even if he has the ball, you, you still don't tackle someone like that. Like you can tackle anybody and somebody any way you want if somebody has the ball. No, you but you can't don't grab them by the quarterback. You would twist his ankle. You could do that. Why not? Twist his ankle the way he was twisted it. You can't really do that. Here's the ball. You're, you're just holding onto the guy's ankle and you're just trying to pull him down. Yeah, you could do that. No, but he did it like egregiously. It was the point that he was like he was going to injure. I'll say this: if he t- if he had the ball, I wouldn't feel as bad. He didn't have the ball. He was eight yards away from the ball. Yeah, and you're not allowed to assault people who don't have the ball. You can yeah. block people. That's fine. You can't hold people. You can't trip people, and you can't block from the ground. That's that's like a rule. Like Listen, if you're on the I, ground, I think, you can't block somebody while on the ground. I don't think anybody other than Pat's fans are arguing how ridiculous that play was. But Absolutely. it makes it worse when you have Patriots fans literally trying to defend something. How do you defend something that's live on camera? There's replays of it. Multiple there, there's angles. No defending it. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. You know what I found? A very interesting thing is that Astros fans defending their cheating team, very similar to the Pats fans defending the Patriots. And I, I find it funny because both franchises are full of cheaters. So, like, I just think it's funny that they do the same crap. When they do something wrong, they sit there. Like, I'm a Yankee fan. Nobody ever sits there and tries to defend A-Rod taking steroids. No, nobody, ever tries, nobody ever tried to defend Michael Pineda sitting there getting caught with uh, pine tar on his neck. All right, yeah, he's a cheater. I have to tell you, like, okay, cool. But damn, if if the Pats and the and the Astros just their teams are just low lives, and everybody's just like, everybody's doing it. It's cool. It's not cool. It's not cool. He, not a good look. He, embarrassing. He, 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 to defend something like that. He didn't even apologize to me. They were talking to uh, Burns this week. Yep. And he was like, he has not called me to say anything. And he, I like what he said though. He was like, to all my fellow DEs, he's like, why, you know, watch happy out. hunting. Yeah, happy hunting, basically. Like, watch out. And then some some salty ass Pats fan was like, That's that's putting a bounty on. Like, really? He offered somebody money to injure the guy? Yeah, he didn't offer anyone money, idiot. I'm like, clearly you don't know what a bounty is. Another Pats fan that was an idiot called Burns fat. He called him a fat bastard. I don't know if you guys have seen Brian Burns. He's six foot five, two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. He's like a he's like a basketball player. Like yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him a fat bastard. He is not remotely fat. All right. He's actually fairly skinny. Considering the position that he plays, like he is not almost kind of fat. It's like, tell me you never watched a game of football without saying you've never watched football. Yeah, basically. It's not uh, Kelvin Benjamin is bigger than Brian Burns. <laughs> yes. Well, he was one biscuit away from being uh one Popeye's biscuit away from being a tight end. That's a good biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on to after the games ended, we've had some controversy the last couple of days. We had Damon Arnett from the Raiders, who Raiders just every time there's Downtime seems like everyone's getting in trouble. You had the Gruden, the Gruden issue. You had the Henry Ruggs issue, which we discussed last week. And then you have the Damon Arnett threatening people with guns on, well, I don't know if it was like TikTok or a Facebook Live. Or I think it was TikTok. It was TikTok, right? I think it was TikTok or something. Pointing like guns at them and telling everyone he's going to basically shoot them and kill them. So he got cut immediately, which was a good move again by the Raiders. What is he, a first? He's a former first round pick, isn't he? He's from Ohio State. Yeah, he's a former first round pick, I believe. Yeah. I think it was about three years ago they selected him in the first round. I think it was no, 2020, I believe, because I saw a, a rundown of all their 2020 picks, and two of them were already gone, which is Ruggs and him now. Mm. And a couple other guys have been cut or traded. So Mike Mayock's having a hell of a time. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you know what? I, I actually appreciate this part of sports, how it's starting to come back around. Because if any one of, the, of us did that, we would be immediately fired from our jobs. Anybody, if you are a Dunkin' Donuts employee working the drive through and you got caught on TikTok doing that, you're getting fired. And I feel like it's been pretty loose around major sports. If you're a professional athlete, you get away with a lot more. And now it seems like the, it shifted and they're starting to be held accountable more. And not that I want to see stupidity like that. But it's good to be held accountable. You're not above everybody else. Yeah, you get paid millions of dollars, but you're getting paid millions of dollars to play a sport. If you're going to act like that doesn't mean shit and you want to act a certain way, I'm glad you're being held accountable. It's about time. I I agree with you on that one. I agree with you. I I think, um, I I honestly think, you know, they're they're getting free endorsements in college now. Uh, They can get paid or whatever it is, which I think is a big mistake. Uh, You're going to see a lot of players throwing games now especially from like bum schools trying to beat the spread. If you have no chance to be a pro, why, why do you care if your team wins by a lot or a little? And uh, you know, that's, that's, that's where we're going to go now. Uh, they want to gamble on, on that. Then all right, by all means, go ahead. Um, but I think there should be a curriculum for athletes in college. 
to teach them to be adults because they're far like who, who do you think you are pulling a gun on TikTok or some nonsense like that and menacing people like you've got to be like some sort of new level stupid and and to think that that individual went to college is is like you said he went to Ohio State that's got to be a yeah. black eye against Ohio State doesn't it like as a university like you let that that kid go to school there I hope he didn't get a diploma there like to me that brings down your your the quality of your school doesn't it when you have morons that go there and do stupid things and they have their dipl- your diploma on their wall and yeah. they can sit there and rep your school like and they're complete like idiots. I'm not even going to sit here and try to say he's a low life or a dirt bag. But he's just stupid overall, just flat out stupid. And, and of course, you'll get the people like uh, like Kadarius, Tony, we young. OK, being I, I was young once, too. I, I didn't think that stupidly like I just didn't. I mean. We, the three of us were young. We did stupid things. Yeah. I would never think to pull a gun on somebody and be like, you know, it's going to be chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Like I would never do like, that's so stupid. Is like, Tony like the new uh, Odell Beckham Jr. But like with less talent, like, like he just doesn't shut up and stay out of his own way. Yeah. Just play I the mean, game. No one cares what you think. Honestly, if you're going to have horrible takes continuously like that, just shut up. Yeah. And he keeps getting hurt a lot too. So he's not really like not saying help. Not even saying in the field. So it's like, just shut up. I think that's kind of uh, appropriate considering that uh, a lot of Giants fans were posting about Hampson Nasruddin saying Kadarius Tony is his dad because Nasruddin went to tackle Tony in college and, and tore his ACL. I think it's pretty funny that Tony now can't get on the field. That's that's ironic. Calm. Yeah, but I think uh, yeah. Moving on from there. I mean, another another point of uh, contention in the NFL is uh, the whole Aaron Rodgers situation unfolding. I mean, mm-hmm. I. I like the fact that he came straight out and said he's not going to be the poster boy for Fox News or CNN. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with per- personal preference. And you know what? I respect that. I respect that a lot. You know, Yeah, I like that, too. I like that he said he don't give a shit about either side. It's just that's Yeah, absolutely. It's And that's what it should be. And, and, and however you feel about the COVID vaccine, I mean, the, it should be your personal preference and your choice for you, your loved ones, whatever it is. I will say my only thing with Aaron Rodgers is like it didn't make sense why he lied because there's no mandate in NFL to have the vaccine. So just say you aren't vaccinated. I I think I he didn't want to do the rest of the other. And I don't. I the problem is, and he said it straight out. He goes, everybody in the locker room knew I wasn't vaccinated. He goes, the entire front office knew I wasn't vaccinated, and most of the media knew I wasn't vaccinated. It took somebody just sitting on that information until they could turn it around on me. Oh, because then he got caught with COVID. Right, so it's. I just want to point out Denzel Mims just caught COVID and uh, he's vaccinated, so doesn't really make. Well, it I, well, I was just going to get to that too because other COVID issues right now are the the Vikings. They had their their I think I forget who it was, but he's been hospitalized. He was vaccinated. Um, he's been COVID, and then they had twenty nine players, including and then coaches, including Mike Zimmer, who all had to get tested because of close contact. So like, if that would have been bad too for a bad, you know what do you call it, bad spread for in a locker room, 29 guys. Imagine having to come in on Sunday and be like, we're 29 guys short. Like, they would probably just cancel that game, the Vikings game. And then yeah. I would get a push because I, they didn't play. I took the Vikings. No, I didn't take the Vikings this week, but I could have got a push. But anyway, that's moving, besides the point. <laughs> moving on from, uh, from that issue to another issue that's plaguing the NFL right now, taunting penalties. There's been a lot of talk. Right. I've seen Adam Thielen comment on it. I've seen Damian Woody comment on it. Um, and a, a multitude of players have commented on the taunting penalties and it played a very big role in last Monday night's game, or I rather, I guess, no, it is last much last week, right? It's week nine's Monday it's, night game. Yeah. Yeah. Week nine. Monday night. Even though technically it happened this week because Monday is part of this week, but it is week nine's it. Monday night game. Um, yeah. what are you guys thoughts on, on taunting in the NFL? I, I like the I I understand why they came up with it. I understand that you know empty stadiums, you could hear everything everybody was saying, and all of a sudden coaches and staff and you know these boom mic operators are picking up like the most horrible things people are saying to each other. And I think that's always been part of the game. And if you want to crack down on it, that that's great, that's wonderful. But you, you got to understand these guys are animals out there trying to kill each other. So some horrible things are going to be said. They're doing worse to each other physically than verbally. So the softness of the penalties and 
it, it's ruining games. It's ruining the idea of the game. It's ruining the sportsmanship of the game. It's ruining the. It's ruining betting. I don't want to sit there and see. Oh, we're boom, four and out, and then all of a sudden, no. Uh, he, he he stood over him for a half a second too long, and now it's a first down. Like stop. They didn't. They didn't earn those yards at all. You know what I mean? And there's a line. There's definitely a line. And I think most of us can see it when when it's a legitimate taunting penalty. You throw the ball at somebody or you step on them or you do something ridiculous like that. But that's always been called. That's always been a personal foul. Saying something or standing over somebody for a half a second too long or giving them an extra shot kind of right after the play within a, a, a fraction of a second of the play going on and getting in each other's face. Sorry, that's not taunting. That's part of the game. It's intense. Yeah, it's tough because it's – I don't like because it's a violent sport as it is. So, like, there's going to be young. There's going to be cursing. People are going to be amped up. That was a huge play. It was to get get off the field. The punt team's coming on. Yeah. Now you have a chance to well, – oh, I think it was – that lead that led to the field goal. I didn't watch the end of that game, but that led to the field goal that won the, the Steelers, right? Yeah. So, like, you think about it. You're about to get off the field. You're up one. Steelers have won that game by two. You're up one. Sit on the ball. Let's try to get this game – pull out a win. And you have Bears money line, you'd be pissed to see that. But they're going to piss me off more about it was that I, it made it, it didn't even look like it was because of the taunting. Right. So it looked like because they hit the ref. Yeah, yeah. And the ref leans into him. It's just like, what was the real reason why he pulled that flag? He, would he just say it was taunting, even though he wanted to make it seem like it was him touching him? It just seemed yeah. very suspect. If I, I mean, I don't know. If I'm the NFL, I'm looking at that, that ref and I'm like, you're what was that? Now for two or three weeks, you, yeah. you're not, you cannot ref a game if you're going to act like that. So you can't have, have games. You can't have games be judged by a bullshit taunting penalty. Uh, I so I, I I didn't like the play the call on Monday, um, only because it, it was too long. It took too long to do it, uh, and it did look like the ref got touched by the player by by you know, unintentionally on the player's behalf, intentionally on the referee's behalf, um, and that that's when he decided to throw a flag. Which I, I just thought was a little ludicrous. He but looked like I, it was James Harden throwing up a three, making contact, and all. Yeah, yep. he's like just sat there, hand up in the air. But uh, I agree with taunting penalties. I, I, you talk about how this is an intense sport, and this is this is a violent sport. Boxing and MMA are both violent, and when they're done fighting, they shake hands and they literally just punched each other in the face for a, 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 an amount of time. They didn't roll each other on, on the, they didn't just That's put true. each other on the ground. They actually punched each other in the face and they shake hands and they say nice things to each other. These NFL players, if they had it their way, because of the way that they play the game as kids, as children, and they had, there's zero accountability to meet, to meet a certain standard as children. Cause that, that's what it comes down to. You play with your friends in the street and there's no adult there to sit there and tell you to, to, to stop being an animal. And if they had it their way, after every every tackle, after every interception, they would take their dick out and rub it on each other if they had it their way. And honestly, when you're truly great, you don't have to do stupid shit like that. Barry Sanders scored a lot of touchdowns. You know what he did? He handed the ball to the ref. Because when you do great things, you just pretend like it's, it's, it's you don't even pretend it is no big deal to you when you do it all the time. I, when you I, do it all the time, it's not a big deal. Mike Tyson had a lot of knockouts in a row before he lost. When he knocked somebody out, he didn't sit there and run around like he he walked around. He he literally knocked somebody out, was like, all right, announce me so I can go home now because that was business. That's all it is. You sack somebody, it's business. Get up. You're on the ground. Goodbye. Get up and walk away. You don't need to sit there and stand over him and stare at him. You don't need to do a little dance and do all this little crap. Act like you've been there before. You know? I it, agree with you 100%. It's, 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 it's unnecessary. It but it, it's... I, you know I, what? I don't that kind of stuff with... is the same thing with being offsides, holding. It's all about discipline. If you don't have 100%, it, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'd rather, but see, for something like those soft taunting penalties, I'd rather see the the player get fined. I'd rather see the player get fined. I don't want to see a game get defined by some bullshit penalty. See, but here's the deal, though: the reason that they do penalties and not fines is a fine only affects the one individual. A penalty affects the whole team. So how do you hold somebody accountable if they're making millions of dollars and you're going to fine them ten thousand dollars? They don't give a shit. But Couldn't that's the less. other thing. But they still don't give a shit when it affects the team. I mean, seriously, that, the coach. You look does. at, you look at what does. happens play to play in, in sports. Okay, you look at just when the defense is on the field. A running back will gain eight yards. Eight yards. First and ten. Boom. 
eight yards. The guy who makes the stop, the tackle, stands off and uh, deflect. He just took eight yards from you. What the I, fuck? I, I don't disagree with you. For? I don't. Do, and, and if you have a coach that is worth his salt, he, he'll stop that shit. But they don't. My they favorite. Don't. My favorite thing in NFL is when the the DB gets burnt for a play, but the quarterback overthrows him, and they're like. Like you did, you did nothing. <laughs> that had nothing to do with you. What about the? Oh, I, I it, it's so funny. Every time somebody gets a, a what's it called, a pass interference play. Every every cornerback that gets beat and it takes a horrible pass interference play, they look up at the thing and there's always the focus on their face and they're like, nah. It's like you just poked him in the eye and grabbed his leg and tried to drag him to the floor and you're like, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? But, uh, I I just I just feel like if you play the game a, a little bit and and again. There is no respect. I agree Guys, with you. I, I, I think you got to have some respect for your opponent. Without your opponent, there is no game. You got to have respect for that guy. If he's not out there to be against you that day, then you're not playing. That You make money because you play against him. So there should be a little bit of respect. And I think that's why in, 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 the, in the combat sports, as they, as they call them, MMA and, and boxing, I think that's why they have respect for one another. Because you might make a million dollars off a fight that day. It's only because that other guy is worth the million dollars to fight. If he doesn't take that fight and you got to fight a bum, you're not making that money. You know, like McGregor and Mayweather, they made buku bucks yeah. off that fight. And they talked a lot of smack before that fight. But at the end of that fight, they're both sitting there multimillionaires going, damn, babe, we did it. We did it. Yeah, that shit talk was fun, though, for that fight. That was great. I yeah. watched that again. Yeah, but you knew it was fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but I watched that shenanigans. again. It's all, it's all a money but, grab. They're just trying to pump it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but moving, uh, on, moving forward. Yeah, moving on. Another thing was uh, go back to the COVID issue. The Browns had a COVID outbreak in, their, outbreak in their running back room. They only have one active running back as of now. Uh, Hunt is hurt. Uh, you have uh, Chubb. I think it was uh, Penton or Fenton. I think his last name is. He's, the, he's on uh, COVID with Chubb. And then they also have, I think it was John Kelly, I believe his name is. Uh, he's also in COVID protocol. The only running back that's not in COVID protocol is Dearness, Dearness Johnson. So they don't have one running back going into this week if you know everyone else doesn't pass the COVID protocols, which is they have they have to have two negative tests uh, within the span of 24 hours, which they're not doing that right now. They're still testing positive. So that's all big to watch and monitor uh, coming into Sunday. And then the big news today, well, there's two big news today. It was one – which broke early in the morning was the Cam Newton's back with the Panthers and then OBJ signs with the Rams. Um, so I mean, what do you got? What's your take on the teams, um, you know, and their signings with Cam Newton and OBJ being back and how they're going to affect the Panthers and the Rams. I mean, I think it's good that Cam Newton's got a job. Good for him. Uh, I, I never disliked Cam. I mean, he's got, I mean, there are fans that don't like him. I, I honestly, I don't dis or like, I don't like or dislike him. I had nothing him. He don't play for my team. He never really did nothing to me. I, I couldn't give a damn less about him. But, you know, you like to see people employed. I don't think he's so terrible that he should be unemployed. Uh, you know, he could be he should be definitely a backup somewhere. If 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 Sam Donald can start, then he can back up, right? Surely. Uh, I don't understand where I agree. I like a lot of Panthers fans are kind of like touting this as like, yeah, welcome home. We're gonna start doing better now. And you got rid of him for a reason. It wasn't because he was lighting it up anymore. Uh, and he wasn't doing great in New England, which is weird because New England seems to get like a whole bunch of guys randomly up until just now when they got Cam Newton. Every other quarterback that went through there in between Brady getting injured and then getting Mac Jones has been somewhat successful. And then they'll leave the Patriots, go someplace else, and they'll tra- They'll be trash. Jacoby Brissett, uh, who we're watching tonight, right? He's already injured. Wow. Matt Castle. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G's pretty decent. Jimmy Jimmy G's a good. He's he's like Kirk he's Cousins. A, his team already picked up. You know they drafted his replacement. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. J- Jimmy G is is Kirk Cousins. They they're both they're they are the the freaking Marcus Stroman of NFL quarterbacks. They're, Jimmy they're G's better looking though. Yes, he bangs, and he bangs porn stars. They're uh they're they're not they're not game changers. All right, and and as soon as you get a guy like that, you're looking for his replacement. He's good enough to get you by. He's not the guy you're building your franchise around, and he's definitely not the guy that's winning you a Super Bowl. He's just the guy that's on the team when you win the Super Bowl, and you're like, all right, cool. You know, thank God for that defense. So, I mean, Cam Newton going back to the Panthers, good for him. They, I, I feel like the media is making more of it than it actually is. You know, they needed a quarterback. They got a quarterback. That's it. 
yeah, I think the half and half played cam comes from like the flashiness, like he's a superstar and he was a scrub. I mean, he was a superstar years ago, but not he was when he went to Super what, Bowl. Like was, all of remember. 19 months, maybe. I mean, he, he was an MVP yeah. for this. He was an MVP, wasn't he? I'm, I'm, or am I imagining that? And the fall from grace, but acting like your shit don't stink. And then he goes to the Pats and it, it, there's reports that the guy can't learn a fucking playbook. You I know, mean, I, I, I think I, so I don't, unless somebody's going to stand there and actually do it. Uh, he won MVP in 2015. Um, I was so somebody's going to actually up, stand yeah. there and go, yeah, I've seen him. He can't learn this playbook. Then it becomes a telephone game where it's like, I don't like this playbook. That doesn't mean I can't learn the playbook. It means I don't like the plays. As the quarterback, you kind of got to buy into the playbook, right? Yeah, but I mean, if you're getting picked up from a team oh, that yeah, doesn't want you again, anymore, how do you walk in there and say, yeah, I don't like the playbook? It's like, yeah, well, we're the Pats, so why don't you shut the fuck yeah, up? Yeah, and he's a former MVP. I mean, you're, you're the Pats and your MVP quarterback that won you to six or seven Super Bowls is gone now. So you're starting from scratch. So that we're the Pats bullshit. But that's that the don't point. fly. You that's won like M- the Cowboys. You won going, MVP the Cowboys. one year. You won MVP one year. So you're going to walk into a room. Name me the other player on the team know right nothing now that but was the Super MVP. Bowls. You're going to walk into a room where they know nothing but Super Bowls. N- name, name me another guy on that team that was a league MVP. Not now. That's it. They only had one and he left. A one league MVP doesn't change the fucking whole dynamic of the team. I'm not saying it does. What I'm saying is they had a lot of change on that team. A lot. I agree, but you're and, not going to. And you build your team around your best player. A, you're walking into a franchise uh, 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 of winning, of championships. That's what they know for the past, what, 14 years? That's all they know. And you're going to walk in there and say, I don't like the playbook. So either you're dumb because you can't learn the playbook. Or you're really fucking dumb thinking that you have a say in the playbook. I'm not saying you have a say in the playbook. I'm saying is you play the game around your best player. And usually that best player is the quarterback. He wasn't their best player. Team. He was not their best player. Who's their best player then? Who's their At best that player point, on offense? At that point, anybody. I'm sorry. He's He was shit. When he went there, he was shit. Nobody wanted him. And they picked Wait, him they up as have an extra receiver. option. They didn't have any receivers. Thank you. The receivers weren't that good. They had, they had good running backs. That was it. Yeah, and they weren't even that great. Tony Michelle was good against the Jets, but then again, who isn't? Yeah, I mean that's that's one game. But the but they have the running back. You guys, I mean, I know you guys aren't fantasy football guys, but like when it comes to New England running backs, you really don't like you don't not since Corey Dillon because there's there's it's just a committee, and you don't want to when it comes to fantasy anyway. You look at it, and there you never know who's going to be the, the lead guy there. Who's going to be yeah, the, but you know, like the t- tell me one team right now that Cam Newton would make turn them into a winning team. Right now, out of all the teams in the NFL, Cam Newton is going to go in there and automatically they're going to become a winning team. The Vikings. Maybe <laughs> Kirk Cousins Broncos. sucks. No chance. The Broncos, maybe. Because Kirk um, Cousins is trash. Because Teddy Bridgewater and what's his other face? Uh, Jake Locker. Jake Locke. J- Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Jake, Jake Locker. Locker. You go this guy. Yeah. Drew so, Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. I think I would say Cam Newton's an upgrade on that. And On Teddy Bridgewater? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, and and what? Let me Cam think Newton Panthers, three years ago, maybe. Well, the Panthers went from Cam Newton to Teddy Bridgewater to Sam Darnold, so like they trusted Sam Darnold more over Teddy Bridgewater. So that's what you got to be thinking. I don't know if that's either, but that could be just a personnel bad scouting thing. There. But again, but that's but it's based on personnel. Know. What does this player do that I can maximize? I mean, that's what you should be doing, right? That's why, like. You have people that are certain fits for certain schemes. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what you're supposed right, to be right, doing right. as a coach. I mean, you don't just sit there and make a playbook and go, these are the plays we're winning. We're going to run. No, a smart coach will go. These are the skills that you have. We're going to run these plays based on your skills. Not this is what we run. This isn't fucking remember the Titans where it's Novocaine. You just keep going. It'll keep working. Like, no, your it doesn't stance, work that way. Your stance right there, that statement that you just made totally annihilates your hatred of Tim Tebow because they played around the, the Denver Broncos played <laughs> around his skill set and they won a playoff game. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, his, so, but Tim Tebow sucks. That's Tim how they Tebow won that sucks. freaking but, was his skill set playing defense. Cause that's how they won that playoff game. Cause they won the world. They won the Super Bowl the following season, running the same book with a actual quarterback. All right. <laughs> well, I will say taking Nick's argument and putting that into actual practice. Was John Harbaugh when he Harbaugh when he uh, when he they drafted Lamar Jackson? 
they switched their playbook around to suit Lamar Jackson. I mean, granted, it's not working tonight, but it did work his first year. He was an MVP uh, his rookie year, right? Was his rookie yep. year? His rookie year is MVP. And he's incredible that year. He's still pretty good talent. I mean, obviously, tonight's not showing it, but even last week, he's coming back from behind and everything. And that's an example where you take the skill set of your key player and switch your book around it. So, I mean, I, I do get Nick's argument there, but Yes, I mean, but you're, you're, you're comparing really cool. Lamar Jackson, who's an up and coming kid, former to Cam MVP, Newton, to the Cam former Newton, MVP. a former league MVP. So is Lamar Jackson. His best years are definitely MVP. behind him. His best years definitely behind him. You're not changing anything for Cam Newton. Well, also, you're not going to win. Check too. He's not changing it, for dude. Me. Cam Newton's lucky he has a job. Let, uh, let's come on. Let's I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying is don't sign the guy to play and be your starter if you're not going to use his best attributes to the benefit of the team. That That's doesn't make any well sense. Good. That, is that would be well like you good. sitting there taking your kicker and going, I need a quarterback right now. You need to go out there and throw, boy. He didn't, he's not there for that. He can't do that. Dude, that is all you're relying well on good, your kicker. You can't walk into you a fail. locker room and say, I'm not learning your fucking playbook or I don't like it or it doesn't suit me. Listen, all I know is Al Pacino lost games because he refused to play the game the way Willie Beeman wanted, right? Oh, God. All right. Well, I'm going to say we kind of beat this, this argument down to a dead horse. We're at a stalemate here between TJ and Nick. Uh, I tried to put, give some input into it, but that did not uh, just further divide. Listen, Rook, they said that Willie Beeman wasn't smart enough to learn the playbook either, all right? Willie. Playbook's too slow. <laughs> Playbook's too slow. Willie Beeman's also a f- fictional character, but... And not in here he's not. Not in here he's not. So moving on with NFL, we have Week 10 coming up. Uh, I don't know if you guys look at some of these matchups. I don't think it's that great of a week. I feel like we say that every week. No, last uh, no, I said last week there. we said it too. Last week looked like shit too. Last week did look like shit though. But this one, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that because I'm actually looking forward to Saints Titans. That's one of the games I'm looking at. Really, without Henry, without Jameis, you know, only because I feel like it's just I don't know. It seems like it's a winnable game for both of them. I'd say Browns and Pats. I want to see Miles Garrett just destroy Mac Jones. Yeah, for Brian. For yeah, Brian. No way. B- Bills and Jets is what I'm looking forward to. Other than the fact that I'm a Jets fan, you're about to find out how and if the Bills can bounce back and if the Jets can step up and actually show up for a big game and maybe pull out a win. Yeah. Kansas, uh, Kansas City versus the Raiders would be interesting too. It won't be a good, a good game, I don't think, but it'll be interesting. That's a good Sunday night game. Um, I, obviously, that's why it's in prime time, but um, – Panthers, Cardinals, that's not really that great either. Vikings, Chargers could be good only because, like, anything involving two- Kirk Cousins is so anticlimactic. No, but between those two teams, they're so hit or miss. Like, one and of I don't know if Dalvin's playing so good and then they're not. And sometimes the Vikings play really well and they don't. Um, but yeah, I think we pretty much wrap up NFL here. A lot of NFL news this week. Yeah, I mean, NFL has been great. I think it's the big story right now. I know we're probably going a little long on this. I think we probably do this for like 30, 40 minutes already, but, um, well, feels like it, uh, but it just is so much in NFL. And I, that's why I made I made our rundown pretty NFL heavy. Um, so moving on, we have uh, the Yankees offseason rumors, which is if you follow Yankees Twitter, every single person is rumored to go to the Yankees. From Berlin, you play shortstop, you're going to go to the Yankees. Yeah, even starting pitchers, you have uh, you know Bobby Ray, Verlander, you have Kershaw. Scherzer. You have center fielders, shortstops, first baseman. So, I mean, that's that's what's going on there. I mean, I, I mean, out of those positions, I think the main need for the New York Yankees is the starting pitcher um, or second second line starting pitcher, uh, center fielder, shortstop, and first baseman. A lot of people saying center field not so much because of Hicks, um, but Hicks I is think, a fourth yeah, outfielder. I, I, yeah, I think you definitely need to upgrade at center field. I actually don't think you need to upgrade at first base because you have Voight, but I guess defensively, they don't want to stick with him. But I would rather think? I'd rather bring back Rizzo than keep Voight. I'm fine with moving away from Voight. I don't think Voight's Voight isn't good enough. It, it, he doesn't make a good enough case to not go out and pay Rizzo. Rizzo is a game changer. Voight isn't. Voight's just there. He can be yeah. hot and he can be really cold. But Rizzo's going to choke up with two strikes and get you a game winning hit. Yeah, absolutely. Or he might hit you a home run once in a while and win the game. I'm not saying he can't do that. I'm saying is when I need a runner on first, Voight's not going to do that. Yeah, Listen, ask anybody, who who would you rather see with two on, two outs, game on the line, Rizzo or Voight at the plate? 
I'm taking yeah. Rizzo every day of the week. Hundred percent. And I remember that playoff game. I tweeted out. I was like, besides Rizzo, Stanton, and Judge, I don't even want to watch in a bat. Yeah. After those three guys were up, it was like, what's the rest of the lineup? And I mean, you guys. I mean, I'm with you guys. I want Rizzo back. Um, doesn't seem like there's too much going on between Cashman and and you know Rizzo's camp, but um, they're looking to make a move for Olson, and he even said that for Matt Olson from the from the A's that Cashman's been like pretty much there. I think they're at GM meetings right now, and he's saying you know, rumor is that he doesn't want Billy Bean to leave without this deal being done uh, for Matt Olson. So what do you guys feel about Olson instead of if that's the the second plan behind Rizzo? I'm, I'm like fine with it. I, I like that Olsen Junger, but I'm always very um, I'm very skeptical about people that have played in games that don't matter. Moving to games where every game matters and seeing how they'll do. Like somebody asked a question about would you take Otani and and Trout if you had to give up like the whole roster? And I was like, yeah, I, I they play great baseball, but I don't know if they could handle playing in New York. If they if they could, they would have signed here in the first place. I think I think if Rizzo was a few years younger, it wouldn't even be a debate. Yeah, if Rizzo was a few years younger, I'd take at all costs. Oh, yeah, I, I think that it's too, an yeah. age issue, and that's it. Uh, we all know Rizzo in his heyday, you, you're throwing money at the guy. Mm-hmm. So it, it's just a reliability issue of if you pay him, is he going to play 100 games, 120 games, or is he going to play 40 games? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, but I, I well, think I, I think Rizzo will play a lot of games regardless. The only people who are going to stop the, him from playing games are the Yankees because they, that's how they manage. Um, I, I just think it, they're talking about the long term effect. You know, how long will he be playing? Is the question? Do you address a player that could play for five years now and get Olson? He could play for the next five years, or do you stick with Rizzo for the next one to two years and, and have to give him four a four year deal to get him? Get who Rizzo? Yeah. Uh, well, and, yeah, and I think right so. right now he's what thirty two. I'm, I'm, I'm t- I know he's over thirty. He's over thirty for sure. So, so how long does he have left in the tank? And you know what, what's what's go, what, what's going to happen with that? Do the, you the, secure somebody for the next five, six, seven years right now in Olson, or or do you get somebody like Rizzo who who won't cost you? Pro- excuse me, won't cost you prospects, but may not be on the team in five years. Well, definitely, that, almost that's definitely. The funny thing though, I, I find that argument. Like or, or the conversation hilarious because it, 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 it you'll be reading an article and the same article will be saying how you know is it worth getting Rizzo how, how much longer does he have how much does he left have left in the tank that same article will be sitting there saying that you know uh, well Brett Gardner might still be a good option to bring back he might have a little left in the tank he showed some spurts this year what did he show this year what, what a propensity to get out a propensity to not be able to hit the ball off the ground and out of the infield. I mean, come on. I, I, I'm sick of this argument. I'm sick of the, the the apologist for Brett Gardner. Oh, he's the anchor of the team. No, he's not. Enough is enough. Thank you for your service. Time to move on. You know, he's he, still he, my he, thunder. I right? missed the boat. Oh, yeah. Listen, he missed the he's boat. Never, this is last week's podcast. <laughs> and the fact that, and the fact that I, what Aaron Hicks as well. See you later. Bye bye. Listen, Bye, Aaron Hicks. Hating Brett okay, Gardner when, is my cup of tea. You're, you're right? reading. I, I'm reading this article today about Ca- Cashman throwing out there that yeah, they made me some moves in center field. I got some latitude with the budget and stuff like that. And in this article, it's talking about how the Yankees can't afford to lose or, or ignore the fact that H- Hicks was like in the 99th percentile for walks and, and and like, come on, is that really what we're talking about right now? That's why. That's walks? why those, yeah, those metrics it. are trash. It's yeah. a joke. He's useless. Brett Gardner and Aaron Hicks together are a shitty fucking center fielder. This is like I'm getting like like the PTSD from talking about Brett Gardner again. I'm so sick of it. Just fucking tell say no, I'm, just, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because this is exactly Nick's rant that he did last week. It, but it's well like, deserved the here. fact that people are still out exactly there. It doesn't make it any less true. It back. It doesn't be, I'm not saying it's less any less true, but it's just funny that I'm like, this is the this is you guys have the exact same take on him. And I agree with, I 100% agree with it. Get I rid of them. Argue. That Let them go. Aaron Hicks is useless. Okay. He's always hurt. And when he's not hurt, he fucking swings and misses to no end. But T, they're not going to get rid of Hicks because he's getting paid. Bar- bargain bin Hal will not pay somebody to not play on the Yankees. Dude, I'll start, I'll start a GoFundMe for that guy to please leave. Go I will pay golf. you to leave. <laughs> 
Okay. If I, well, how would you feel if he ended up going on the PGA tour and like killing it? That'd be great. I'd root for him. I'd be so happy for him. I'd, I'd root for him. Maybe he like, can hit a ball that doesn't fucking move <laughs> because he can't hit one that's getting thrown at him. That's for shit. Sure. All right. We're moving on from the center field in the first base position, but for the starting pitch, obviously shortstop, we're all looking Correa, Seager. One of them will be happy so- with my concern with the whole Correa thing is, you know, a lot of fans are saying, well, the fans need to get over the fact that he cheated the Yankees. Okay. Yeah. The question I have are, are there players that are in the clubhouse now over it? Like, no. what if they don't yeah. like him? They shouldn't. And, and is it worth bringing him into the clubhouse if there's a, a an overall disdain for the man in the clubhouse? You know what I mean? Like, like this is the guy that was adamant. He cheated against your team and then was like, very like so what i cheated i don't care and now he's going to go into your clubhouse and how does that mix with your you know t you and i played baseball for many a year and when there were players on the team that we didn't like they did cause problems yeah a hundred percent but I, I, as leaders you try to like stop that but, but there's a can't. difference because there's people i have at work that i might not particularly like but i have to get through my day at work they have to get through their day let's have a good day if correa walks in and says listen i'm here to win ball games with you guys let, let's let bygones be bygones say what you want about me, but that's in the past. You know, I'd appreciate it if we could just move forward. I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lay, lay it all out there and I'm going to give 150% every day to get us some wins on this team, you know, mm. but you got to walk in there eating a big old fucking humble pie. Yeah. Day one. Cause if he comes yeah. in there, like, yeah, it is what it is. Who gives you shit too bad. You're not going to have a good go of it. Yeah. He has to address the team like almost immediately. And also, I mean, Cashman's already said, that that's not an issue for them, the Yankees. I guess he must have. You have to say that. Dude. I'll tell you, my commander will sit there and say crap like that, too. That'll make it true. <laughs> he can't tell me how I feel. It's true. I you agree. know what I mean? Yeah. Look, dude, there's this called passive aggressive hate, right? Like where 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 I, I don't like you. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm damn sure not going to help you. And that's not good either. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you okay. can you can okay. hurt somebody without hurting them. No, it, it's, it's not good for the team. It's not good for the team dynamic. He needs to walk in, eat crow, but, and move on. And yeah. the rest of the team has to – they're going to give him the business a little bit. But if he's going to walk in there saying, listen, I'm here to help us win games, I'm going to do my best to do that. That's I mean, it. I get, I'm not I here for best, anything else. Then you move on. I think the best way yeah. to address that is, hey, listen, I was on a different team at the time. That was what the team was doing, and I'm a team player. What else am I supposed to do? That's it. I, I, I'd appreciate it. And I would do the same thing the for you guys. That's now it. that I'm here, I'll do the same thing for you guys. All right, let me, ask you something, though, let, me, let me ask you something. Besides the, the cheating scandal for Correa, who, do you, I mean, who would you prefer? If you're just saying basically just skill, set, if, if, talent. If there was no it? cheating scandal, I think Correa is the option. Yeah, I agree with you completely. If I, I, I'm going to say Correa, and team. there's a lot of people that would say, oh, well, why do we need another righty? I'm sorry. How does uh, Stan Ross say it in uh, in Mr. 3000? The earth, wind, and fire. Gladys Knight. The temptations. Some things just always play good. So that whole righty-lefty thing that everybody loves to bring up is bullshit. Because if your entire lineup was Ted Williams, you wouldn't be bitching that there were too many lefties. No. You wouldn't be. And that's. I agree with you guys. I agree that... If you're going to go by skill set only, if there's no cheating scandal, I think Carlos Correa is the top three. If you're looking at the stats. Yeah, okay, looking at the stats. Looking at the, the record of him in the postseason. He's he's even hurt the Yankees in the postseason. But, I mean, but the problem is, is that sports are not played with math. They're played with, with heart. hearts and minds. Yeah. And that plays a key role that computers can't, attrib- uh, uh, can't attest to. So and I don't know. Also- we'll see where they go with it, and we'll see how much it'll cost them. And he also has to walk in understanding that the New York media is going to bring that shit up right away. Day oh, yeah. one, he gets signed. Hey, uh, what happened? Yeah, uh, you know, tough. 2018, yep. what, you know, what, what do you have anything to say about, you know, this is the team that you screwed over? Yeah. He can't be like, oh, come on. I, like, he, this is New York media, you, sports media you're dealing with. They're not yeah, letting it go. You better have the tact to be able to deal with it. That first question is going to be in the intro. If the Yankees do sign him, is going to be – Questions about the cheating scandal. I mean, 100%. He's going to face it. He's got to be mentally tough, too. Yeah. I think he is. I think he's been in the post. He's deep enough. It was Houston, but I don't know what Houston media is like. But I would still say dealing with all the postseason stress, five straight years, um, going to ALCS, um, I think he's I think he's fine. I think he'll be good with New York. But um, 
I mean, that's, that's basically it. So just a couple, you know, obviously award season right now. So yeah. Wait, wait, what, one more thing. Talk about who's the Mets GM. Oh yeah. This is actually really funny. Um, but yeah, well, let's get into that one second, but I was just saying award season's out. I think judge just won a silver slugger award a second time. Um, you have judge Stanton, the wise Cole and Chapman are all finalists with all MLB team. Calls a Cy Young finalist and Gallo won a gold glove. So just uh, and uh, Judge won that fake award that they just came up with like the other day, the the, the Bible fielding Bible award. <laughs> I seriously, when I heard about this award, I was like, "Are the, is the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints giving out awards now? The fielding Bible? What the fuck is that's, that? That's so strange." But I apparently, it's it. that loser. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that invented Saber Metrics. Oh, I can't uh, remember his name right now. It, it escapes me, but he created an award with some other losers that never played baseball. Is he, is he the guy from, um, that's in Moneyball? No, no. Maybe. Paul D. Podesta. No, he didn't invent it. The guy that invented it is like an old man. I cannot remember his name for the <laughs> life of me, but, uh, but he invented saber metrics back in like the eighties and nobody uh, cared then because people were busy playing sports and now people don't play sports anymore. They sit inside all day long and play video games. So now everybody knows about stats and saber metrics. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he, he created the award, the fielding Bible award and Aaron judge won the award uh, for right field this year. And everybody's like the fielding Bible award is a real award. The gold glove is a popularity contest. Okay. I'd rather have a gold glove than a fucking fielding Bible. But if it was a popularity contest, would a judge had won it? He's like one of the most famous faces in baseball. Uh, don't 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 bring up fucking logic, all right? Don't, don't bring up fucking logic. <laughs> all right. Well, moving on. Yeah, obviously, we get into the Mets GM. It just seems like everyone. I just want to. I I just want to apologize to our friend Chris right now. Chris, we're sorry. We didn't do it. All right. Go the ahead. Mets should be apologizing to all their fans every year. I Go just ahead. don't get it. Every GM they offer the job to, or someone who they want to interview, they're just like, nah. There was somebody recently. I think that the Yankees. Uh, Dean Afterman. Yeah. The head of uh, minor league scouting. Yeah. And, and they're like, the Yankees were like, you can interview. We approve and it. She was like, nah. <laughs> she, she said, no. You could be possibly a GM. That would have made her the first yeah. female Who would GM. would run into that dumpster fire? Nobody in their right mind would run into the dumpster fire. Somebody no. would really, somebody that had no shot of being a GM anywhere else and never even thought in their wildest dreams that they could GM a major league baseball club. That's who they're going to get. Nobody wants that job. I, I so I've been hearing that more. It's more so that nobody wants to work with Sandy Alderson and his son than anything else. Yeah, because his son is the uh, top scout, right? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's not that nobody wants to work for uh, the uh, owner. I can't remember the Steve. Uh, yeah, the thing is Steve Cohen. It's not that to work it's with that, him either. It's he that nobody wants to work with Sandy Alderson. That's what it uh, is. I thought it was because it's Steve Cohen. No, I, I've been reading that it's, it's a lot of issues with Sandy Alderson and, 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 and is it Alderson or Alderman? It's Alderson. Right? Alderson. I'm, not, Alderson. I'm not crazy, right? Yeah. But what, it, why doesn't Cohen just fire him then if that's the issue? I have no idea. Did he no make idea. a deal with the Will Ponds that like, he might have, he might have. Alderson on. Like, what was it so strange? Or he has something on Stevie Cohen, but. But, uh, but yeah, nobody wants to be the Mets GM. And that's a problem for the Mets. I think it's, I guess that's I mean, that's pretty much it for MLB then. Um, and then just around, I think we're running a little long here already. So um, just touch real quick. College basketball is back. I mean, Nick, you don't like college basketball. I do. So just saying, follow us on Twitter. I'm going to follow along with Duke Hofstra and Seton Hall. Seton Hall is pretty much one of the better local teams here in New Jersey. Um, we have Hofstra. I only follow them because I went to law school there. And then Duke, I'm just a Duke college basketball fan. So, and then it's also Coach K's retirement tour. So um, that's, that's a – what are we doing over here, Nick? What's You started talking about college basketball, so I was like, might as well go wherever. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I know you don't really like it, but uh, I might be doing some stuff on my own that I'll do solo podcasts without you, Nick. Listen, everybody knows that white kids just like college basketball because back in the day, that was the only way you could see other white kids play basketball. <laughs> I know you said a lot, but and we'll, we'll keep not that any less true. Twitter. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. We'll I'll tweet it out from our account. Look, uh, I'm in San Francisco. I can see human piles of shit everywhere. <laughs> Those are people. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you guys wanted to touch on this one. We weren't really going to touch on NBA NHL, but – with the NHL, we have uh, 
this Islander sandwich. Nick, you you shared it. It looks disgusting. Oh yeah. So apparently it's a uh, it's like a kind of like one of those unicorn bagels where it's got a swirl, but it's orange and blue. So it's an orange and blue swirl with a buffalo. It basically, it's a buffalo chicken sandwich with blue cheese, which I don't like blue cheese in the first place. That is literally moldy cheese. Um, it's blue cheese with a buffalo chicken piece of fillet smashed between uh, two pieces of of blue and orange and, and orange bagel, which. Ultimately, it doesn't really sound terrible, but if you see the damn thing, you're like, dear God, that's disgusting. There shouldn't be something with meat on it that orange present in the world. Like, I don't want my meat orange. Like, am I, am I crazy for that? Like, like, it just doesn't look like something I want put in or near my mouth. And I, I guess the Islanders just thought that was like a great thing. Like, I, I don't know. It was, it was just absolutely ridiculous. And and it looked gross. And if you saw the comment thread on Twitter, everybody was like, that's disgusting. One of my favorite comments was, I, I don't remember who said it, and I'm sorry for not giving you credit. Somebody said, is UBS Arena going to change their name to IBS Arena? I, IBS being irritable bowel, <laughs> irritable bowel syndrome, um, which I thought was just very clever. And then somebody else <laughs> said something along the lines of, I guess they're really going to put their new bathrooms to test. <laughs> I actually thought... Uh, it was cream cheese. Yeah, it's blue cheese. Yeah, it was blue cheese. Blue cheese, it look, but it looks so like, like chunky, chunky, and I know blue cheese is supposed to look like that, but like usually I expect the you know the the sauce blue cheese. Not like it, it was. It, uh, it did not look like something I wanted to put in my mouth. No, I, gen- the, again, generally, the I question don't like is: it. Are we going to take a trip out to Long Island and all try it? I'm not trying that shit. No, oh. I ain't going to eat that. I'm Listen. Not- 50% of the battle when you're creating a meal is presentation. If it doesn't look like something that's appetizing, why would anybody ever eat it? And then also I'm thinking about the, the like the what it goes into trying to eat a chicken sandwich on a bagel. Like I, I just it sounds messy. It sounds difficult and sounds, messy. Especially with all that that blue cheese looks like cream cheese is gonna spill out all over. Yeah, and then it on top of that. Me, I don't know about you guys. I cut my bagels in half, and I don't believe in cutting a chicken sandwich in half. Half, yeah. I also would say the other issue is going to Long Island. I don't want to go out to Long Island. <laughs> That's just... Well, you know, what I mean? I'm, I'm saying I cut my bagels like obviously you slice. No, I know, it. I know what you mean. You cut it yeah. in half, like a like a like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But like for me to drive to Long Island to get food, I better be going to like. I'll be stopping in Brooklyn to get like Brendan cars or like Rolling Roaster. If I'm going to Long Island to get food, I'll. Go to like Ruth's Chris or something like that in yeah, yeah, Field. I'm not, to, I'm not going to IBS Arena to go shit my brains out in the middle of a uh, second and third period. <laughs> I mean, I would do that as a Rangers fan. No, nah. I will give myself purposeful diarrhea to just destroy IBS Arena. It's, it's it made me really happy, actually. It's UBS, UBS. Yeah, but now it's IBS Arena. But uh, I think that's all we've got. Unless you have any hockey news, not really, right? This week no, just that uh, the most ridiculous goals of the year have been scored against the Rangers. That Connor McDavid goal was just oh filth. I, you can't even be mad. I'm it's not. I was glorious. impressed. I was impressed. Glorious. It's like yeah. watching Gretzky. I mean, let me. All right, hold on. Mayor culpa. Mayor culpa. What I'm saying is, what I meant was in our time. No, no. It was. It's like. If you saw Gretzky do something amazing, you didn't get mad at the guy. He's right. just being Gretzky, and everybody needs to get on his level. And it's the same thing with McDavid right now. He's just being McDavid. It's 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 just, it, it's just pure admire it. Talent. Just fucking, it, just just fucking admire it. Talent. It's like when Griffey played baseball, Trout playing baseball. You just sit there in awe and sit back. You don't get mad. You just sit there and go, "Wow, okay, yeah." Can you get show mad. up because you show up because it's like I got to see him play. I don't yeah. care. He beat the snot out of my team. I got to see him play. Yeah, that's true. But I think uh, good podcast. Chesterkin's been good for the Rangers so far this year. Yeah, uh, with the shits and everything, didn't come out to get his uh, his star the other night because he uh, had the stomach flu, which is code for he's got the shits. He was clenching cheeks and letting it go. Ran to the back, left his pads on, sitting on the toilet. But from all of us over here at the Scoreboard Addicts Podcast, we thank you for being with us tonight. Please like, share, subscribe, and good luck with uh, all your sporting events this weekend. Hopefully, it'll be more interesting than last weekend. (laughs) We'll see you again next week. 
Steve Reich.